Harold Osmer, West Hills Wood. We have a piece of mahogany just lounging about. Decided to turn it into a tiki tray. Thus the ever clever title, Mahogany Tiki Tray. Yay! Hey, Harold Osmer, West Hills Wood. Be sure to like and subscribe. Go ahead, hit the button, pretend you like me. This is our buddy Josh. Josh is like a tiki guru guy. He's great. He told us all about his place that he has called Tiki Tapu, which equates to private sanctuary. It wasn't so private the other day as he invited us out for a party, and there are probably 50, 60 people hanging out at his place. He does that every now and then, and it's great. You know, if you collect any sort of thing, it's a whole lot better if you share it. And Josh and Rachel are very good about sharing their things. Terrific people. We are grateful to know them. So they invited us out. We knew we were going to the tiki thing. And I said, you know, I should make a thing for the tiki room. We've been here once or twice. So I had a general idea what I was after. And I had this beautiful mahogany piece of wood from my buddy Julie. Y'all know Julie, right? Yeah. Okay. Hey, so I have this piece of wood. Then all I got to do is decide what to put on it. Well, that's where the carbide create stuff for my CNC machine comes into play. And I used the stock tiki head guy there on the one side. And you pretty much have to decide how these things are going to go. And this is the more tricky part for me. It's also a good bit of fun. This looks like a car wheel here, doesn't it? Hmm. Yeah. Either way, I'm going to drill it. I don't have a long enough uh, Forstner bit, so i got to use a spade bit. That's that flat one there. And here's another look at it. And I'm able to reach most of the way through, so I drilled this out. This is for little handles on both ends of this piece. It's meant to be sort of a tray. Yeah, it is a tray. Okay. So you drill it from both sides, and that's what you wind up with. Looks pretty cool. Straightforward so far. Just trying to implement the design. Well, I want the lower part of this piece to be lower than the two edges. Hence the term lower, I guess. Anyways, drew out a line, went over to bandsaw, and pushed it through. Now, you get a pretty good line out of this, and if I were to go slower and take my time a little more, then uh, I'd get a more clean line there. But anyways, I had a plan. So there's the tiki carved out on the CNC machine. And while the thing is still strapped down, oh, see, oh, there's Tapu Tiki getting carved on the other side, those letters there. That's nice. It's a process. You can go crazy sitting there watching that machine. It's it's real mesmerizing kind of thing. So anyway, we had this center section I just cut out on the bandsaw, and we wanted to try and make that area flat before we carve out our little tray areas in there. Turns out... There's a bit for that. McFly, they call this. McFly. You can see there's four cutters on that. It cuts to the side and it cuts down. And it works extremely well. Now, I could have programmed the computer to do this or the machine to do this, but I just did it by hand. I lowered it down to the level I wanted, and I was able to manipulate the machine back and forth enough times to make sure I covered the whole thing. And it made it very flat. From there, I went ahead and carved out the lower sections. And that's part of the design consideration on this. you got to decide, are your three little pockets going to be the, the same size, different size? Which one goes where? you just got to decide these things and then go for it. You can see we trimmed up the edge a little, put some oil on it by here, and the mahogany just jumps out. That color is just astounding. And this is a food-safe oil that's on here, butcher block oil. Easy to get. Kind of looks like a long limo car thing going on there. Hmm. And there you go. Of course, when you oil it, you realize all the scratches that you didn't get sanded out yet. So there's a little more work to do. Um, but it's what we do. So you get to it. And then you get a tiki tray. Look at that. Nice. There's a zoom in on our tiki guy. Again, that was a stock image provided by the Carbide Create guys. So that was kind of fun, and it helped dictate some of the sizing of what the pockets were going to be on this. And once I knew what that was, I could decide the other side, how big that was, and Tapu and Tiki, both four letters, made that easy. 
then you have a tray that's really good for, well, candy. Hmm. Or keys. How about that? Maybe coconuts. You decide. Or you can lean it up to guard the room. There you go, in the tiki room. I know the light's a little funky on this one, but mm, nice picture. Here he is with his friends. The tray is a he. Hmm, okay. With his friends at the door. Josh and Rachel will figure out where they want this thing located. Again, this is their room. It's a private area. The chairs are nice. This is essentially a two-car garage. In fact, it is a two-car garage. And it's taken time to develop and become what it is. In the meantime, it's Tapu Tiki, private sanctuary. Hey, Harold Osmer with West Hills Wood. Be sure to like and subscribe. Send beer.